Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and I don't have lipstick on right now. How did I forget that? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're going to be doing my bi-monthly favorites video. I only do favorites every other month because if a product is in this video it's something that I've used for a long time something that I know works and something I keep gravitating back to even if I have like other new products or other products in the category that I also like so these are all heavily tried and tested they have my seal of approval and they've just been like my go-to's for the past two months so before we jump into my products don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like this and if you want to see any more don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little bell icon so that youtube will actually let you know whenever i post a video which is going to be every monday through friday okay so i have mostly makeup products but i have one makeup brush and then i have one hair care product so we're going to jump into those first and then jump into the makeup so the makeup brush that I've actually really been liking is the NARS Eda brush. I think I mentioned this in another video of mine, but this is like the only like high-end brush that I like because <laughs> I did try to buy um, like a nice Marc Jacobs brush and as soon as I opened up the box like it fell apart. I, I really don't know what happened there, but I didn't spend that much money on a brush to have it fall apart out of the box. Um, so this brush is just a contour brush. I used it today. I like to bronze with a bigger Morphe brush and then I just put a little bit of my contour powder here and then just carve out right there and then I blend it out with a dual fiber stippling brush. And I just find that for my face shape, for the contour that I like, this just is the perfect size. It's a little bit flared out, but I find that that actually really helps too, because you don't want just like a sh straight line of contour, but you do want it confined to just the hollows of your cheekbones. And when I was contouring before, the brush I was using was too big, so it wasn't really, it didn't look neat. And I was contouring with the same brush I was bronzing with, so for the most part, that's kind of a no-go. You can definitely do it, but if you want it to look a little bit more clean, a little bit more crisp, if you really want your contour to stand out from your bronzer, I'd recommend a brush like this. I think there are some drugstore dupes out there. I'm going to start looking into those because I just love this brush, but I know it's really an expensive brush. I'll probably do a video about like my favorite brushes and like dupes for them or whatnot. Let me know down below if you would like to see that. But I've actually like I've wanted this brush for years. I think I first saw um, Casey Holmes use this in a video when I first started watching YouTube years ago like 2015 and like, I've wanted it since then and I've only gotten it in the last two months and I've, I've literally been loving it and I've used it every time that I've done my makeup. The next non-makeup product that I have is actually a hair care product. I'm not wearing it today. Today I actually have an appointment for my very first diva cut. So I will be going to a curly specialist salon here in New Jersey and getting a haircut specifically for curly hair. This is the like before. They say if you're getting a haircut you have to wash your hair in the morning and not put any product in. That way they can see like your natural curl pattern and then cut according to your curl pattern. So this is my hair. After a shower this morning, it's like 90% dry and there's absolutely no product in it. So I do look very like Hermione from Chamber of Secrets here. But we're going to hopefully fix that with the haircut today. I only have to work a half day today, so I, I am going to do a video on the Diva Cut experience because it's something I've really been looking forward to and something that... I think is really going to help me on my journey to not really straighten my hair. I haven't straightened my hair in almost two months now, which is huge for me. I don't think I've, I've straightened and blow dried my hair every time I've washed it since I was like 13. I'm 25 now for reference, so it's been a long time and I'm trying to embrace my curly hair. It hasn't been the easiest. If you guys want to see a video about the whole curly hair journey, let me know down below. I know my first curly video or my first hair video didn't do so well, so if it's something you guys do want to see, let me know. I could definitely do like a video or a series about it, but I am definitely going to do a video on my diva cut experience just because I think that's something worth sharing, especially if you have hair that's similar to mine. Sorry for the rant, but... That's all leading into what's been my favorite product for the past couple of weeks and that's been the Curl Keeper Ultimate Hold with Frizz Control Gel. It's the green bottle. There's another bottle I almost accidentally bought off Amazon. 
I think it's a yellow or a red bottle, go for the green bottle. It is the best for humidity. <laughs> the best. I find the best way for me to apply this is right out of the shower, soaking wet hair. I will section my hair off. So I'll actually pin up the top, pin up the sides, and just do a small section at a time. I will just run my hands through with the gel like this, pin it back, go through the next section. And when I do that, there's no frizz at all it looks beautiful and I get the best second day hair out of it I do have like a whole sleep routine now I put my hair up in a pineapple and I put on a little sleeping cap but I find that when I use this gel it does get a little crunchy so I will diffuse a little bit after I use it on the first day but then the second day hair is like perfect and I don't even have to touch it like I just take it out of the hair cap when I wake up in the morning and it looks stunning I've gotten to third day curly hair with this gel, which I have not been able to do before. One of my biggest challenges was I had no idea how to like upkeep curly hair throughout the week other than washing it again, which I've definitely learned different techniques, different ways to not have to wash your curly hair every day, which I used to do surprisingly. I was like the only way I knew how to make my hair look pretty curly was when I washed it in the morning. I've come a long way from there. <laughs> and it's all because of this not all because but it, a big part is because of this gel okay moving right along we've got um, my favorite contour that I've been using with this NARS brush it's from the Smashbox contour palette and I've just been using the contour shade right here on the end you can tell it's the messiest I've been trying to use this bronzer shade in the middle but I actually have a bronzer favorite that I've re discovered that is going to be next this is actually the first bronzer product i ever bought so if i'm going to do more of those my first blank series this will be one of them this is the Too faced chocolate soleil medium deep matte bronzer i had no idea how to use bronzer once upon a time and i knew that i wanted to get into it and learn more about it so i went into an ulta and i just it just so happened that that day they had a Too Faced representative there who was helping people out doing like mini makeovers and stuff and I was like I really want to get into bronzer but I have literally no idea where to start. So she sat me down, she applied some bronzer and it looked beautiful like she sold me on this hook line and sinker and I loved this for so long but then I got into other bronzers, I started trying out different things and I've only recently pulled this back out a couple of weeks or so but I remembered why I fell in love with this. It smells like chocolate. <laughs> it does. Don't eat it, but it smells like chocolate. And it just blends out so beautifully. I'm wearing it today a little bit down here, right here on the cheeks, and then a little bit over here. It just blends out so seamlessly. It looks so natural. I don't like doing too harsh of a bronzer because that's something you could really overdo. But I absolutely love this bronzer and I'm glad that I was able to rediscover it in my collection and get back to using it. So today I actually am wearing the Smashbox Contour with this bronzer and it doesn't show up too like dramatic on video but in everyday life like going to work it looks beautiful. My next favorite you'll know if you've seen almost any of my videos is the Stay Matte Powder from Rimmel. I have the shade 001 Transparent that I've been using um, in like the highlight areas like on my chin and under my eyes if I don't already have a powder there and in the middle of my forehead. For the rest of my face I do like to use the shade 004 Sandstorm but I find myself drifting more towards this one as I've been experimenting with more face powders. I just really enjoy this and it's one of the best face powders powders you can get from the drugstore. The only thing I don't like about it is the packaging but I can get over that because it's a really really good powder. My next favorite is from ABH and this is actually the Blush Trio in Peachy Love and it's specifically this lightest shimmery shade right over here. A couple of things of this shade. First I never thought I would like a shimmery blush. I never thought I would like a blush ever but I like a shimmery blush and also it is a very coral brush brush it is a very coral blush and i am wearing it today i find that i love to kind of drape with this and not just put it on the apples of my cheeks because i find that if i put blush just on the apples of my cheeks i look mm, like a child in theater class if that makes sense so i do like to drape it up above my contour and my bronzer and i think the best shade of blush for me is coral I was trying to use like some pinks and some reds and they just don't look that great on my complexion 
but this coral shade looks incredible. I also like the medium shade, which is the one right here in the middle. It's a little bit deeper, but it's still in the coral family, and I just use it with a light hand for a nice matte blush. But I've just, I've literally been reaching for this shimmery blush. I also took it traveling with me on my last business trip in my travel makeup video. I did mention this if you want to go ahead and check that out. I will throw that up in the cards. So the shimmery blush has been a favorite. I've used it almost every single time that I've been putting blush on in the last couple of weeks. Another product that won't be a surprise if you've seen my videos is a highlighter from Becca. This is the limited edition Royal Glow highlighter because of the Royal Wedding. I, I love this highlighter. Again, I am wearing it today a little bit on my cheekbones, on the upper lip, and then on the tip of the nose. I don't know how to explain it. It's just the most like peachy, golden highlight that is very, very summer appropriate. And that, as I'm feeling this, today is like the first Friday of summer, so I'm definitely in full summer vibes even though I wear all black. I'm gonna wear all black all summer because that's just who I am as a person, but I'm still feeling summer with my makeup. <laughs> so I've been loving this highlighter. I think I've only used like one or two other highlighters other than this one in the past couple of weeks since I've gotten it, but for the most part, I've been reaching for this one daily. The last favorite I'm going to be talking about is actually the lip color that I'm wearing today. This is the Matte Lip Stain from YSL. I now have three shades. I have shades 7, 28, and 11. I'm wearing shade 7 right now, which is not quite a nude. It's like a nude with just a little bit of pink to it. And I love this for every day. It's so comfortable. I can wear it to the office. I can eat lunch and it doesn't look like... There's a clear demarcation of where my lipstick has come off. It just looks really close to my natural lip color and it's comfortable and I love, I love it. You really don't have to reapply this if you don't want to, but I do like just to carry my lipstick with me just in case. The other two shades I have are number 11. This one's really, really pinky. It's beautiful for like the spring look. I think I wore this one in my cherry blossom makeup tutorial. I'll throw that up in the cards as well. Again, very comfortable. This one, you can tell a little bit when it's worn off, but still like comfortable and it looks beautiful. And then shade 28 is a little bit of a deeper nude that I go to when I'm doing like a smoky eye. Like I love a smoky eye and like a deep nude lip. Oh, beautiful. So I have been reaching for all of these over the rest of my like liquid lipsticks now that we're in summer just because they're so comfortable and they last so long. It's just, it's the perfect thing to throw on in the morning before you go to work and then not have to worry about it throughout the day. So those are all of my May and June, wait, what months is it? Yeah, May and June. <laughs> So those are all of my May and June favorites. Let me know down below if you've tried any of these products out and what products you've been loving these past couple of months. I hope I'll see you guys. Why am I just having issues talking today? Thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye.